special day. We're going to worship together. Amen? Amen. And, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, those of you who are watching us by Streamline. Good, everybody who's, good morning, everyone who's here. And those who are out there, it's nice to have people here. It's exciting. It's nice to have the sunshine. Um, let's all stand if we can, wherever we're at. Even if you're at home, please stand. We're going to have a time to worship God, get our minds ready, and get excited about worshiping Him. Let's do it. Amen. Father God, you're such an awesome God. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you that you've given it to us, Lord. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us, Lord, as your own through Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, as we join you right now in worship, that you're lifted up, God. We pray that your spirit just moves among us, Lord. Lord, move wherever our people are at, your people are at. Lord, we, are, we just want to acknowledge you as our God today. Uh, we want to ask you right now your forgiveness of our sins and cleanse us through the power of your Holy Spirit because of Jesus. We thank you for that forgiveness. We ask right now, Lord God, you renew our hearts and our minds and our spirits. Lord, because we want to fully worship you today. Amen. We give you all the moment. We give you all the time. We give you all the praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just focus on him now. Amen. The Lord's been good to us. Amen. There's good news for the captive. Good news for the chain. There's good news for the one who walked away. There's good news for the doubter, the one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh yes, hallelujah. Oh, how sweet the sound, for our grace abound. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He's beauty for the blind man, riches for the poor. He is friendship for the one who is friendship for the one the world ignores. He is pleasure for the weary, rest for those who strive. For the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abound. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. When the 
darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Think of David with that one little stone. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant, cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. The enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Second, please. We're going to prepare for communion, so if you happen to be here in this location, you'll notice we have uh, communion trays on tables throughout the perimeter here, and you'll be welcome for the next two songs, and uh, you'll be, you're welcome to join in taking communion time. Uh, just to give it a little bit of update, there is, uh, we have some new communion packet thingies, and it actually has two parts to it, so the first part's kind of hard to see, it's, it's uh, clear cellophane. 
you rip that off, you'll see a wafer, and then there's another one that's a, like a foil sort of thing. You pull that off, and that's where you get to the juice. So, and then I know that uh, Steve also did uh, two cuppers as well, just in case if, if you don't feel like messing around with that, and that's what we've been using. So, kind of your choice there. Just trying to serve as well as we can. Yeah, exactly. So just in case you want to, you want to be a double dipper, you can always use the two cupper one as well. Just so <laughs> <laughs> and of course, at this time, if you happen to be watching live stream, thank you so much for doing that and joining us uh, through online. Um, if you want to get your emblems right now too, that'd be great as well. We've been spending uh, some time just focusing on John in God's presence. And we talked uh, last week a little bit about how the Lord is at our right side, which was an indication of Him being having our back, that He's there for us. And the Apostle John referred to that same concept from the perspective that Jesus, because of His death for us, and after we receive Him as the Lord and Savior, He becomes like our defense attorney. He comes to our side when we mess up and uh, when we sin. Um, there's a scripture in 1 John 1, 9, of course, talks about confessing our sin and he'll forgive us from all unrighteousness. But just right after that, in chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says this, My dear children, I'm writing to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, and then we all do, of course, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. When we blow it and sin somewhat, what John is saying here, as followers of Jesus Christ, now as, as we sincerely confess our sin to, to the Lord, Jesus becomes our defender. And he's never lost a case. <laughs> His blood is sufficient for all our sin. Amen? Amen. And so, and that's of course what John's talking about here. Uh, as we participate in communion, remember, of course, it takes some moments to examine yourself, whatever you need to confess. If you're, any, if you're anything like me, you might have a bit to confess this week. <laughs> and, uh, and then remember, he's our a wonderful defense attorney. He paid the price for us by dying on the cross. And we remember that when we, uh, of course, eat the bread symbolizing his body and drink with the juice that symbolizes his blood. Let's pray together. Father God, you're such an awesome God. Thank you, Lord, that you're holy and you're righteous. And you, you obviously... You, as the Word of God says, you cannot sin, you cannot be tempted by sin. And yet, even though you're appalled by sin, and sin is what separates us from you, you're the one that came to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for our sins so we could be forgiven and have a right relationship with you again, be reconciled with you. And we ask right now, Lord, as we focus on the whole meaning of Christ's death for us, that we can be made right with you. God, we just ask for that. We ask God as we examine our hearts right now, we confess everything we need to confess, that we, we remember that Jesus died so we could be made right with you. And he's a perfect defense attorney. Always winning our cases for us. We love you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus. It's all because of him we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the time of desperation When all we know is that and fear 
There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us there is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe.
Lord, we know you're here, Lord. Your presence in me, Jesus, light the way. By the power of your word, I am restored, I am redeemed. By your spirit, I am free, I will fall at your feet. at your feet this morning. Let your presence come upon us, Lord. Light the way. Fill us with your power, the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, let us walk with you, and we will worship you forever. Thank you today, church. Freely you gave it all for us. Surrender your life upon that cross. Great is the love poured out for all. This is our God. This is our God. Lifted on high from death to life. Forever our God is glorified. Servant and King, who rescued the world, this is our God. Freely you gave it all for us, surrendered your life upon that cross. Great is the love poured out for all. This is our God, lifted on high from death to life, forever our God is glorified, servant and king, rescue the world, this is our God. people trickle in and uh and it's such also a blessing for our brothers and sisters who who are here with us in heart and spirit and watching right now because we know that you're uh you're just as committed and involved and we love you we love people present and those who are not present but are present you know what i mean i if we could could we all stand we're going to be uh well, first we'll say a prayer as we get for getting to God's word, and then if you can remain standing, I'm going to read it a little bit, a little bit longer passage, but not that long. Um, but hopefully, uh, I think God might have some neat things to share with us today. Let's pray. Father God, as we get into Your Word today, 
First of all, Lord, we want to come again to fear. I think, Lord, a lot of times our fear can inhibit our hearing you. And so, Lord, we want to come against our fear because we want to hear you better. We ask, Father, that you would speak to us today through your word, loud and clear. Give us those ears to hear what your spirit wants to say to us today. Give us a heart to receive. Give us a wills to follow and obey. And Lord, help us just to love you. We thank you for the time just we had just to worship you in song and through communion. And right now, God, we just want to, we just want to receive. We want to sit at your feet. And we want to hear you today. We thank you, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you. Y'all can remain standing. I'm going to be reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 2 to 11. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a, vis a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? And Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went to bed, back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you're seated. Kind of stop there. It was like, what's that shocking thing you're talking about? Today's message I'm going to be speaking on is ahem, letting God get my attention. If you happen to have a program or um, well, you could have got it coming in, or if you were on, are online live streaming, hopefully you received an email. It has both the bulletin and the e-connection card. We hope that everyone can fill out whatever. If you would, by the way, fill out your e-connection card later on. At the end of the, my talk here, uh, you'll see a little response part at the end of the connection card where each of us can respond in a way that fits us personally. But today I want to talk a little bit about hearing God better. We've been in a series called The Freeing, Releasing Love of God. And I said, let's just take a few weeks, because we focused one was on being in God's presence. And so we said, let's just take a few weeks to kind of dwell on that. So we're dwelling on dwelling in God's presence right now. And last week we talked about the importance of having and developing a regular, we call the tent of meeting or quiet time, a time alone with the Lord each week or each day, excuse me, to try to help us focus on Him uh, and to better live in His presence. And this morning, I just really want to focus on practicing listening to the Lord better. And this is really important. But if you're like me, this is probably a practice that you probably neglect more than other practices, maybe. I hope you'll understand what I mean by that. I mean, well, I'll give you an example really quick. I have quiet times, attend the meetings we talked about last week. But honestly, I'll tell you my normal quiet time, in general speaking. I'll, I'm decent. I could do better, but I, I'm decent at praying or singing to the Lord. I like to open up with singing. I don't always do that. But 
In fact, I like to do it every time, but I don't do it every time. I do at least half the time, not most of the time, I sing to the Lord. Sometimes quite a bit, actually. And then I spend most of my time, honestly, reading God's Word. That's what I do. And then I have a good amount of time. I have a prayer list I pray through, and, and that's what I do. That's my quiet time. But you know what I forget to do? Have a time alone with you where you say, okay, God, I need to be quiet and I need to listen to you. Let me ask you, how many... I, don't raise your hands. Rhetorical question. But how many of you have a time where in your quiet time or whatever, you just say, okay, God, I'm done talking, you talk to me. Maybe a lot of us do. Well, I need to be honest, that's a weakness of mine. And I realized this morning, I had my quiet time. I said, Lord, I'm going to talk about listening to you, and I'm going to mention the fact that I don't do that enough in my quiet time, so I better do that this morning. <laughs> so I said, God, you got five minutes. I'm so generous. And you know what's really funny? I think God was so anxious to, hey, oh boy, you're actually going to listen? I mean, I've barely got the words out, and I'm starting to get stuff. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, you're finally going to let me talk. <laughs> Anyways, that caught me off guard, actually. Actually, what he shared was just cool stuff, like, what, I'll tell you what he said to me this morning, really quickly. He said, don't doubt, don't be afraid, don't worry. He, sees these, he says these kinds of things to me all the time. I, I talk with the Lord and hear him all the time throughout the day, so you know. But I don't have enough time, my quiet time, where I do that. That's what I'm talking about. And so he was actually just sharing things he shared with me quite a bit. But it's going to be great. Just, he's always very encouraging to me. It's not always pro profound things, but I always, but I do know sometimes they are. And when I know when the profound things happen, it's from him because it'll be out of, out of the blue. Boom. Boy, that was from him because I don't know where that came from. Today I want to talk just a little bit as we look at Samuel's life and we just heard or read today a little bit that he was just God was trying to help him develop a listening ear to, to recognize God's voice. That's what was happening. That was the account we just read about and that's what we're going to focus on today. How Samuel learned to hear God's voice and how we can do the same. I, I'd like to open up a little bit with, if we can with playing a video clip um, kind of talking about this. Jesus, sorry I'm late. Work was crazy today. No, don't get up. It's okay. Uh, yeah, just got a little bit behind. People are being crazy, you know. That's no problem, Chuck. I'm just glad. Uh, I'm glad I made it too. Listen, let's get down to business. I have a lot of work here. A lot of requests. First things first, pastor and his wife are at a conference. Keep them safe. Um, but, uh, I'm not a fan of the assistant pastor. The less he preaches, the better. Uh, what else? Ralph, his wife, is getting a tattoo removed. It's a stupid college party way back when. You know how those things go. It's in a real painful spot. I'm not a fan of football here, but my friend is. And if I could have two tickets to take him to show him how cool I am so he'd be my friend some more, that'd be great. My dog Nibbles has a gimp leg. Chimney crickets. You know, now that I'm thinking, I could use a new jacket. I'm getting fuzzies all in this one. Please bless my sister, my mother, my father. Our father who art in heaven, my neighbor, Cindy. Hallowed be thy name. Can you sort of train my church to clap on two and four, please? One and three, this is not disco, people. This is serving the Lord. The guy who brings in my shopping cart from the thing. Something I can do to get a raise. Can you read what I wrote here? I think I was, I was dreaming. Plus the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Agriculture, the Secretary of Secretaries, plus their secretaries. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. And that's what bothers me about my mother. Hey, look at the time there. That's, uh, it's, uh, gotta get in there. Jesus is gonna wrap this up and say amen. Amen. Uh, it's been a pleasure praying with you. It's fine evening. I'll be talking with you. Have a good day.
think that was God's exclamation point. <laughs> I think we'll close in prayer now. <laughs> I think the Lord's making a point there. Isn't that interesting? Okay, here's be, let's be honest. So again, just a rhetorical question. Don't raise your hand. You can do it in your mind. How many of you can relate to that video? <laughs> Amen. And wow, it's funny, but it, at least for me, like I shared, strikes a chord. Thinking many times, put it this way Jesus hears a lot more from me than maybe I hear from him forget that prayer is a mutual communication experience it's a two way street it's easy to forget that maybe we don't even believe it we fear it. Again, our fear gets in the way of our hearing Him. And it can be frustrating. Maybe you actually have those moments where you need to hear from God and you ask Him and you sit there quietly and it feels like it's crickets. Ever had that experience? I've had that too. And it's and it often comes at the most excruciating moments when you know you need to hear him. He's like, okay, how bad do you want to hear? It's like, he's like, okay, you mean I actually got your attention now? Hmm, I'm just going to sit here and savor the moment. <laughs> and yet, Jesus said in John 10 that his sheep know his voice, didn't he? Now, God does speak to us. He does. That's for me anyways, and I think for I've heard from most people, it's not usually an audible voice. In fact, I can tell you, I think I've only heard God's audible voice one time in my whole life where I actually heard it. It was one time. I'm not going to share it now. Save that for another time. All right. Okay, I'll keep going. My wife's looking at me. She knows what it was. Okay. It had to do with whether I should marry my wife or not. I guess you know the answer. We've been married almost 38 years. So you know the answer for that, that request. But you know, there's a lot of times where, frankly, this can be an awkward situation. Because you know, some people say, you know, God told me this, God told me that. Cool. I mean, that's great if they have that. That's awesome, actually. Because other people can feel intimidated by that. Because like, I don't get that so much. And so, <laughs> it's so funny. I remember years ago, I, uh, uh, some friends of us, we went uh, actually evangelizing, street, street witnessing in downtown Hollywood. I was pastoring a small church back then. And we, I mean, we went to the down and outer. It was a, it was a rough area, a, the rough area. And, but we were just passing out tracks, sharing Jesus. And, and I remember I, I was talking to somebody and, and I, I just said, you know, uh, you know, told them that God loves them and, and they said, really? Uh, <laughs> did you tell you that this morning? I said, actually, uh, yeah, I, was, I, I did. I was talking with him this morning. He goes, he goes get out of here. You he didn't think I, he'd expect I'd actually mention I'd actually talk with him that morning. But I had. I'd already had my quiet time. It was all good. And so people don't really understand that. They don't really understand how can you hear from God. And yet we can and do. And we have ears to hear. And it's important. Because I think uh, we remember that this, uh, listening to God, hearing God is important because, again, communication is a two-way street. Right? Isn't it? And it fosters relationship. Any, uh, any counselor, good family counselor, would tell you, you cannot have a good relationship if you don't have good communication. Right? right. How do we think that works with human people, but not less than God? Just a question. Rhetorical. 
It does. It fosters a stronger relationship with the Lord and it helps give us direction and guidance in our life which He wants to provide. And He does. I, I'll give you an example. I had a very close friend. He's now with Jesus. Some of my best friends of all time. And actually, you're going to hear about both of them. are with the Lord now. I don't want to think about that too much. I'm happy for them. But one of them, I love them. To the, it's funny how you love them even if they're not with you. You know what I mean. They're with the Lord. It doesn't take away the love. Your love is still there. His name was Darren. And uh, Darren, I, you know, I got really close. Uh, I, got, I had a chance to mentor and disciple him in the Lord. And he became really strong in his walk with God. He had, got, he had prophetic gifts, which I know some people that could be, Ooh, it's nothing weird, it's God speaking and helping. He used it just to encourage people. But I remember one time that years later I was uh, doing a church planning internship. So I felt God calling me, directing me in that way. And uh, I was in my quiet time. And uh, when I was doing it, I was in the God's Word, and it, it's just on this particular quiet time, it was really uncanny. I, I, I hadn't had this kind of experience before that I remember, anyways, where it's like the words rest in the Lord. It's like it was like a spotlight just went like a real light. I mean, and, and it's like a black and all darkened. All the words around rest, the words rest in the Lord. It's like, whoa. I mean, that was pretty dramatic for me. And I remember thinking, Lord, you're, I think right now you're obviously telling me I need to be resting in you. And so, I mean, because I, I hadn't had that experience before in my quiet times. And it's like, okay, okay, Lord, resting you. And I, and I actually had been praying about starting a church, and so I know that's where that was coming from. But I said, okay, Lord, what does that mean to rest in you? How do I rest in you? And I was pondering and praying about that. And as soon as I went, when I was doing that, the phone rang. And... Uh, I had picked up the phone, and, and, uh, and it was my friend Darren. We, again, we had moved away by that point. And he said, hey, Lonnie. Oh, hey, hey, Darren, how you doing? I goes, oh, good. Hey, I, I, um, you were just in your quiet time, weren't you? I goes, yeah. How, how, how'd you know it's that? He said, well, uh, Lonnie, I got a word from the Lord for you. Really? What's that? He goes, the Lord said to tell you that you need to rest in him. I said, no kidding. He didn't happen to tell you how, did he? Uh, he chuckled and said, no, he didn't say that. But he did tell me that I need to call you right now and tell you that. So I did. Now, is that a coincidence? I can tell you all the days of my life, besides that moment, I've never had that experience with that right then. Right? Come on. Was that a coincidence? answer is No. Who was, who was operating and orchestrating those situations? Who was it? God. Yes. Using His Word and His people to communicate His message. God does speak with us and He encourages us and He lifts us up and He wants to help us if we'll just have those ears to hear. I, I, my message today is <clears throat> letting God speak to me. <clears throat> letting God speak to me. And let's look at that passage in John chapter 10. Jesus said this about his sheep knowing his voice. He said this, When he, the good shepherd, has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. That was verse 4 and 27 in John chapter 10. Jesus' sheep know his voice. They identify it and they follow it. But how do we do that? Now listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you, because I've been all around in all places on this one. Because it could be a little scary to hear this, right? Right? Come on! It can be. First of all, what if God says something I don't want to hear? Or, what if I don't hear the end at all? What's wrong with me? Or, 
What if I get it wrong? What if I think it's God? It's not. Or, how do I not know it's myself? Or even worse, the devil? Or, I mean, there's a lot of ors in here, right? Or I feel so inadequate at this, so I don't want to try it all because it means like I'm so behind because I should have done this a long time ago. Can you relate to that one? Because I have. A lot of ors, right? God is so patient. Why would we not want to hear him? And why would we not want to trust and follow his lead? My sheep know my voice, and they follow it. They follow me, he said. That's what he said. So, how can we learn to hear God's voice better? We're going to look at Sam as an example in the Old Testament. But it can be summarized, summarized by that phrase, ahem, letting God speak to me. Now, we're going to try that. Remember that? Ahem. Let's try that. Okay, ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Ahem. Letting God speak. Okay, that part two. Letting God speak to me. One more time. Ahem. Letting God speak to me. And so we're going to look at Shaman's example about how to hear God's voice better. And we're going to use the acrostic ahem. <laughs> A-H-E-M. All right? So, how do we do it? First of all, to recognize God's voice more clearly, I need to, ahem, A, I need to be available. I need to be available. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, 3 to 5, it said this, The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel, yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and he ran to Eli. Samuel at this time was a younger boy. We don't really know the age. We just know he's younger. He was being raised and trained by Eli, who was the chief priest at the time, and uh, at the Lord's Tabernacle. Unfortunately, Eli was in trouble with the Lord, primarily because his sons were, they were just flat out wicked. And his sons were the ones who were the priests who were doing most of the work at the tabernacle. And Eli was not checking them like he should. He wasn't holding them accountable. He, one time he said, you shouldn't do that, sons. Kind of like a little slap on the wrist. And that's the only thing we ever heard him, we read about him saying to them. And they blew him off. I mean, they were, they were wicked guys. They were disobeying. I mean, they were perverting God's sacrifice so that people would bring their sacrifice to the worship of God and they would take the best meat for themselves, even though God told them what to take and what not, they didn't do God, obey God's word. They did. They were selfish, and unfortunately, they got fat. And Eli got fat on that too. So he was an accomplice to the crime, so to speak. Also, there would be different different kind of women would go there to try to help out with the tabernacle. And these guys were sleeping with them, and they were married men. I mean, these guys were perverted dudes. They were not good guys. Had no respect or honor of God, and what and, and, and for the and for the role and the function of being a priest. God wasn't happy with him. And he wasn't happy with Eli for not checking his son. So they were under conviction and judgment. And God had already sent a prophet to Eli to warn him that, hey dude, you're, all of your lineage is going to be, first of all, your sons, you, you, they're going to be wiped out. And one day, gone, and all the lineage from then on, uh -uh, I'm going to have my priesthood go through another lineage because you guys are perverting it. That happened to Eli already. Now, the Lord wanted to confirm what he'd already sh shared with Eli through the prophet by raising up another one and speaking to Eli. And that person was Samuel. Now listen, this is deep. Samuel is still a boy. And now he's hearing God's word for the first time. And the first message he gets is not a positive one. That phrase we read, I'm about ready to do something crazy among you that are all outstanding. You're like, whoa. Yeah, it's about what's going to happen to Eli and all the priesthood. Ooh. Anyway. God does speak, but we've got to be open to it. And here, in this situation, God's going to speak to Samuel. He's going to reveal the message. 
But why Samuel? Well, first of all, the Lord is going to call who he calls. That's up to the Lord. But there are a number of positive things that we can learn about Samuel here that can help us better uh, ourselves in hearing God's word. And, the, and what the first thing we're talking about is, of course, we need to be available. Samuel happened to be available. It says right here, we just read it, that he was located, he's in the tabernacle. He's by, the lamp of God hadn't gone out. The lamp of God signified God's direction or guidance in a person's life, his leadership in their life. And also, now also, what else is in the tabernacle? Well, in the Holy of Holies, of course, is the Ark of the Covenant that where God's presence was signified and the glory of God was over that. Okay, so here's, here's Samuel. He's in the tabernacle somewhere. He's certainly not in the Holy of Holies. He's probably in the Holy of place. I don't know for sure. It doesn't say specifically. But he's in that place where the lamp's still there, so he's going to get God's direction. And also, he can hear, probably on the other side of the curtain, so he's right by where God's presence is, to hear God right there. He's in a good place. He's available. And by the way, he's sleeping, so his, his mind's not somewhere else. He's available. God wants us, if we want to hear his voice, we need to be, put ourselves in a place where we're available and listening. We've got to be available. We've got to put ourselves in a place where we can hear him. Jesus talked about this when he talked about prayer. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, he said this, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. Of course, there's a number of benefits for this. It helps us when we get alone. And get alone. This is, Again, this goes, to me, it goes back... Many of us are quiet times, our ten of meeting times, right? Getting alone, close that door, get your Bible open, get your prayer list out, turn on the tunes if it helps you worship. I do that, turn on YouTube, put on my little phone. I'm just, okay, that's what I do. Little, little Bluetooth speaker. Anyways, that's what I do. So, get ready and get listening. Be available. Make yourself available. What's hard? Here's the deal. Well, here's what's hard, though. Sometimes we can, we can do this, but we're not really available. Why? Because our mind's still woo, 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 everywhere else. Right? Body present, mind somewhere else. But we've got to be available in every way. And part of that, of course, is we, just, we need to be in God's Word. And that's part of being available to me. Uh, God said that, basically, to Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written it, in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. We've got to be studying God's Word. That's part of being available, being His Word. So, ahem, letting God speak to me, I need to be available to hear God. That's, that's the A, but also there's H. And that means I need to be heart ready. That's the open and receptive part. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, 6, it says this, then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and ran to Eli, went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Heart ready may have been Eli's main problem here. Because he was available also. He's also in that tabernacle. He's available. But he didn't hear God's voice. And the message had to do with him. Why? I don't think his heart was right. That was the problem. I don't know. I'm not God. But obviously God had a problem with him. That's what the whole message is about. Our heart, our heart has to be ready. We have to be open and receptive. I think sometimes our sin gets in the way and we can't hear God. Sorry. Sorry about that. I don't talk with my hands at all. We aren't heart ready. We entertain sin. We let other things be too important to us that rather than being with the Lord or just Him being our great reward. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. God Himself being our great reward. And so, our heart's not ready. So we don't hear Him. Sometimes God will break through even if our heart's not fully ready. I have found this in personal experience. But that's when it's a really drastic situation. And if that happens, oh man, follow his lead immediately. 
And I can give you so many examples. I can tell you the times when I did it right and when I did it wrong. And the ones that did it wrong stick with me more. But you've got to be heart ready. You've got to be receptive. I think a strong part of being heart ready is having to want to to hear the Lord. How much do we want to hear Him? That's what we're talking about. Maybe it's not a sin issue. It's just that I'm just not there. I don't care enough. We have our quiet times where I'm doing this through routine and that's a good routine. So do it. Absolutely. But get your heart ready too. That's one of the reasons why I do my singing when I do. Get better and better but I need to get better even more. Singing, it helps me to get my heart ready. I'm in His presence. I'm glad when we have our worship singing together here. Getting our heart ready. Right? Yeah. To hear His Word. All right. And so, get our heart ready. This week, I noticed I received a uh, text from a, the daughter of Julia in our church who was informing me that Julia had taken a turn for the worse over the weekend. And she was undergoing an emergent heart procedure. And you might have gotten the email from me because I immediately, when I saw that, I forwarded it along to Eleanor to send out to everybody so we could pray for Julia. I also know this, so, <laughs> this is my text. I saw one text, but I actually saw two texts right next to each other. One was the information about Julia, please pray. And right two minutes later, I noticed it was on my thing two minutes later, was another text from a sister in our church who said, I'm really concerned about Julia. God's put her in my heart. How's she doing? Hmm. Another coincidence, folks. Mm -mm. As soon as I saw that, I knew that was the Lord speaking to our sister and she was listening and immediately responding. So I texted her back too and said, well, here's the situation and please be praying. And she said she would. So we have people in our church who listen and follow. Praise God. Listen, let me tell you something. You want to be a person that God uses? Get your heart ready. Be available. Get your heart ready. He will. He's looking for the people who will be heart, who are heart available and heart ready to respond so he can use you. So that's the second one. Another one. So we, so we talk about A, available. If I want to <coughs> let God speak to me, I need to have, be available. I need to have my heart ready. The other thing I need to do is I need to be ear attentive. Ear attentive. That's different than heart ready. Heart's responsive, but I'm not actually hearing yet. I gotta actually get in tune. That's the ear ready. Okay. First Samuel chapter three, verse ten. The Lord came and stood there, calling me, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Notice three things here. First, God's calling Samuel, he's listening, and lastly, Samuel asked God to speak. Uh, James 4 2 says, You don't have because you don't ask God. Lord, I want to hear you. Like, like today when I mentioned, okay, God, you got five minutes. Oh, that's so bad. Anyways, to hear the, the listening portion. And I mean, I barely got it out and he starts talking. Not how it usually is for me, but... We have to be attuned, heart responsive. He wants to talk. I and mean, that's cool stuff, Right? After placing ourselves in a place to hear Him, our heart's receptive, but we need to get in tune. How do we do that? How do we get in tune? See, God speaks to us in different ways. That's the one thing I didn't understand. I remember I, years ago, I'm thinking, people say, when they said, Lord's told me this, Lord told me that, I'm thinking, man, I don't know, ever, at that point, ever hearing Him broadly at all. Again, I only heard Him once that way. I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Usually when He's speaking, it's not like I'm hearing like a voice. Thoughts usually come to my brain, usually. Different impressions. Um, promptings. God using people, like my friend Darren. The Word of God. It's just like very clear. Sometimes they give me images in my brain. I'm saying because I know that you know this. If you know Jesus. At least some of this. Because you've experienced this, or you will experience this by knowing Him. I remember a time 
when I was uh, in the idea of being irritant of just learning learning to hear his voice what that means I was just a freshman in Bible college and one of the uh, uh, seniors he was actually a, a TA a teacher's assistant oh man he was he was a senior and he was an excellent student I mean he was phenomenal actually and uh I remember he was—he actually had been a TA for me in one of my classes, and uh, he came into my room one afternoon, and uh, which surprised me. And he said, "Lonnie, I just—I just, I just, he just out of the blue, this guy was a kind of a serious guy, and, and he just said, um, I want to hear God better. Don't you? Well, yeah. He says, why don't we do this? Why don't we just like pray together? We'll say, Lord, speak to us. And let's we'll be quiet and see what he puts on our heart. Right. So, cool. Hadn't really done that before. Let's do it. So we sat there and said, Lord, speak to us. Anything you want to say, please? And we just sat there and listened. And after a little while, he, he said, okay. He said, Lonnie, God saying anything to you? I said, well... The interesting, what just came to my brain over and over again was the phrase, I love you, 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 I love you. Over and over, I kept saying that in my brain. He goes, the same thing happened to me. I got that same thing too. I love you, I love you, I love you. So yeah, okay, thanks. And he left the room. That was it. I think God was just saying, you know, free for me. He loved us. That was it. Nothing profound. It's in God's Word. It says that God's the love of the world. God's Word always confirms His Word. Now, if you ever hear anything you think is from the Lord and it violates His Word, you didn't hear from God. Anything God speaks is always in accordance with this. Amen? I mean, completely. Again, He uses this to speak to us. But He does. But we need to be irritative. I remember uh, another time, Ooh. I mentioned one of my friends named Darren. My best friend probably of all time. I think I shared with you before about him. His name was Tom. We were best men in each other's weddings, etc. He's with the Lord too. And I remember one time at Bible college. I think I was a senior by that point. I had just seen Tom. and then I, I, really, I hadn't had my quiet time yet that morning. It was in the afternoon. And so I thought, I'm going to go do my quiet time. I've been putting off or whatever. I don't know why. I just hadn't had it one yet. So I went, decided I was going to go in the basement of the library because nobody ever went down there. I got my time with Jesus. So that's what I did. And when I was down there, I, I was in, opening up in prayer and I felt like immediately God kept saying, put Tom on my mind. And I couldn't get him off. I said, well, that's weird. Lord, I just saw him a little bit ago. But okay, uh, Lord, be with Tom. I take care of him. I have no idea why you're doing it. Okay, so okay, now I tried to open and I tried to get into some other topic of prayer. Nope, back to Tom. What? You want me Lord, I feel like you're trying to tell me something's wrong with Tom. So I don't understand, but okay. Lord, take care of Tom right now. Encourage him. Support him. I don't even know what to pray, but Lord, protect him. Okay, let's go on to something else. Nope, Tom. Tom? Okay. Lord, uh, what else? Okay, Lord, I pray that, that uh, whatever that, uh, whatever's wrong, he's okay. That he's safe. That, that, that uh, please encourage him. Please support him. I mean, I didn't know what to pray. But I, God would not let Tom get out of my brain to go on to some other topic. So I kept praying for Tom. Now, it took the whole quiet time. Well, it wasn't about, much about an hour later or so. I went over to... It's time for dinner, so over there you have to go wait in line at the cafeteria, that sort of thing. So I'm waiting in line, and uh, and I just happened to look to my left, and there was Tom. Like, whoa, he came up to me. I didn't even see him. It was why as a ghost? Why as a ghost? Whoa, he looked like he was so pale, and it's like like he had, like whoa, Tom, what's wrong? So Lonnie, you wouldn't believe it. He couldn't even get the words out. Oh, what Tom? Oh, Lonnie. I was just driving my pickup, you know, as a yeah, and he's I'm making a U turn and I hit a motorcyclist right there and knocked him over off the street. Whoa, La oh, you're kidding. No, I feel so. He starts to go pressed over, like, oh, Tom, I'm so sorry. So I said, is he okay? He said, I, I think so. He kind of dazed and he got up and he sat there on the curb, but oh, I feel so bad. I said, it had to happen right 
when I was in my quiet time. That's why God wouldn't let him out of my mind and my heart in prayer. That's what God does. For those who are willing to hear and follow. Most of the time, God will put stuff on our hearts that's a lot less dramatic than that. Of course, a lot of times it's just to encourage us. But we need to be irritative. And, and, and also another thing we need to be is we need to be persistent. See, if you really want to hear God, sometimes He'll speak right away, but other times you just need to be persistent. It says in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. Once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. See, now, we can talk about why God spoke to and it ended up being four times to Samuel. One, I think I had to get Eli's attention because it actually ended up being Eli who realized after a while that it was God talking to Samuel. So that, it, that was to confirm the message so that when Samuel actually told him, he knew that was from God and not just from a kid. But also there's a humiliation factor. Why is God using a kid and not talking to the high priest? And then there's that issue of also, there's the issue of why four times he's being patient with Samuel. You're helping Samuel learn, you know, the, his voice, God's voice. I, I, I don't want to share that with you. You see, if you're trying to learn God's voice, God's patient with you. Be patient with yourself. It's worth it to learn His voice better and to follow His direction in your life better. It's worth it. He's patient with you. It's worth the effort. He'll start off with something small, like maybe what happened with uh, that... TA and myself and just telling you he loves you a lot or whatever. He knows what we can take, but he'll help us. He, and he never, again, he never contradicts. He always confirms his word. It's always in confirmation with his word. Lastly, if I want to hear God's voice better, I need to ahem, be available, be heart ready, be irritative, be ear attentive, and lastly, I need to be mouth and hands obedient. Be mouth and hands obedient. I need when God says something, I need to do it. Um, see, the issue with Eli is kids when they weren't obeying God's word, and God had already given Eli a warning: get your kids in order. But he didn't. We need to be obedient to what God reveals. If we have to say something, or or if we have to uh, do something. So God revealed to Samuel the, dile- the situation, what's going to happen to Eli and his kids and their lineage. And it wasn't a good one. It was a bad one. I mean, as far as they're, good, they're not going to continue on. There's not going to be, they're not going to have the priesthood going through that lineage. And it says it this way. It says, uh, when, when Samuel first got, this is Samuel's response after he heard from the Lord. In 1 Samuel 3, 15 uh, B to 18, it says this. He, talking about Samuel, was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. But Eli called out to him, Samuel, my son, here I am, Samuel replied, what did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything. And may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold anything back. It's the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks is best. As we said, that's a tough spot for young Samuel to be in. First message he gets, basically, is it's going to be kind of a destruction deal about with, with, for the very people that raised him and are taking care of him. I mean, that's a pretty scary thing to have to say, right? Because that's who those people were. And he was afraid to say it, but he did. And because he, and Eli, of course, coaxed him to do it, which is good. Eli still had respect for the Lord. And so, God then proceeded to develop Samuel's prophetic ministry because he trusted him with one message which he did, and so that enabled him to trust him for more. It's not always easy to follow God's lead. I've shared times where I have, and I'm not going to do that now, but I've done that. I re- 
but God wants to help us. Listen, we've got to be sensitive to Him. I'm going to stop at this. A couple weeks ago, two or three weeks, whatever it was, um, we had a, our Monday morning prayer meeting. Uh, we've been doing that on Zoom. Everybody in the church is welcome to be a part of that, encouraged to. 6.30, please do. But next, they're talking about tomorrow night for the first time forever. We're going to actually be here. Um, 6.30. But I rem- um, we had just opened up in the prayer meeting. Um, immediately God put something on me in my mind. And those who were, some of you know this, you've heard it or you were there, so you know. But for everyone else's benefit. Um, God immediately brought to my mind a uh, my image. Everything seemed cool on the outside. But my, when I was praying, immediately God brought in this, oh, it was a, an image in my brain. Real dark skies. Like it was an awful storm, but it wasn't a storm like weather. It was like from warfare. Bombs bursting. Clouds of smoke billowing. Very dark. Very foreboding. And there was like these, there were angels that were just flying around like crazy, uh, desperate, trying to, it, it, I, I knew what was going on. It was like, God was saying that they're playing, like something's, like there's a great attack by the enemy, the devil, right now, and that, and the enemies, I mean, angels were trying to do everything they can just to play defense, to try to respond to all the different attacks that were happening. And, um, I mean, it was like very foreboding. And it's like, I haven't had, had an image like that that I can remember. And, um, and so we started praying. It was like spiritual warfare kind of prayer stuff. And um, I was it just two days later, George Floyd was murdered and everything broke loose in our country. And you see, on the outside, everything looked fine then, right? But there was spiritual warfare going on behind the scenes that we had no clue of. Still is, by the way. And every now and then, God will want to reveal things to His people if we're willing to listen so we can do what He wants. Because He wants us to pray. Because guess what? God believes in prayer. God responds to prayer. God reacts to prayer. God acts through our prayers. Why would God put people on our hearts to pray if He didn't use our prayer for Him to act? Right? Why would God ask one sister to how's it going with this other sister if he didn't want her to pray for him because God was going to use her prayer for the other lady for in our church? I said, yeah, him, her. Because God uses our prayers and he acts on our prayers. He acts on your prayers if you will allow him to. He believes in you enough to listen to your prayers and act on them. You have an important part in His kingdom. You have an important part. Every one of us do. Every one of us. I know what time it is. I'm going to stop. It's late. So if you would, you'll notice in your programs there's connection cards. If you want to respond right now, I just ask where we're at because we're almost done. I was going to ask you this one question. Where are you in listening to God's voice? If you're right now and you're viewing this uh, through live streaming, if you would get out the e-connection card and respond the same way, that'd be great. Also, on the back of the e-connection uh, the connection card, you'll notice there is um, a place we can put prayer requests. Please do that as well. If you are here, uh, where you put your e-connection card, your, is, there's a, when we're leaving, we have our offering trays right there. And you can just put the e-connection card in that when you're leaving. Or you're offering to. Great. But let's, not, let's look at that right now. In learning to ahem, hear God's voice, what do I need to do? One, I'd like to begin hearing God's voice. Because I don't think I do yet. You probably, as you're a believer in Christ, you probably do more than you realize. That's one of the things I, heard, I understand. I didn't realize how much I did here because I thought it was something different than it was. So maybe you do a lot more than you realize. I, I, that's my speculation, honestly. That's what I found, and I believe that's to be true for you. I, I think you need to give yourself some credit. There that, there that is. 
But also, but if you want to hear, if you want to just start, maybe you're a new Christian, or you, I don't know for sure, fine, check that. Look at the next one. I need to make myself available to hear God's voice. Maybe you're just not in a place where you can hear Him. Because you're all doing all over the place, but you're not... Close the door. Let me hear you. Next. I'm choosing to have an open heart to hear God's voice. Maybe you're, you put your body there, but your heart hasn't been there to receive it yet. Next. If that's true for you, check that. I'm going to try to have an attentive ear to hear God's voice. So yeah, this one's not always easy. Sometimes I have to put my phone, and then often I have to do it in another room. To hear it. Do what you got to do. Lastly, most important, I choose to receive Jesus today. You're not going to be able to hear God's voice beyond maybe his need, your need to receive Jesus if you don't know Jesus. So I ask, if you haven't yet given your life to Christ, if you don't know for sure you're saved yet, if you're going to go to heaven, check that. Don't wait another day. And so... Um, if you would um, do that, we're going to have a prayer. I'm going to pray for the offering. We'll invite our people. We're going to have a closing song right now. This is going to be kind of a prayer for the offering and closing prayer at the same time. We sing a song when we're done. So I want to know how, what, you know what we're doing. Um, remember also right here, our trays for the offering. It would be great. If you are on, online, uh, remember you can still come by at 12.15, 12.45, drop it off your offering. That would be great. Or you want to just sit in the mail the 1599 North Park Drive uh, that'd be, on uh, Kingwood, that'd be great as well. Let's say a prayer. Father God, you're such an awesome God. Thank you, Lord, that we can hear your voice. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, that you enabled all your followers to hear your voice. And so we can follow you. Follow your leadership whether it's through prayer or doing something, whatever it might be. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that you give us your word to help us hear in direction and guidance and wisdom. Thank you for your spirit who prompts and guides us. Lord, I pray for each of us, Lord, that, that we would be able to be in, ahem, available our heart ready, ear attentive, and Lord, our mouth and hands are ready to follow you and obey you, what you want in our lives, so we can, Lord, better hear and follow your voice. And I, Lord, I also pray, Lord, uh, if someone doesn't know Jesus, they would choose to do that today. Lord, I want to thank you for what we're about ready to do our giving. We pray your blessing on the offering. We ask, Lord God, it would be used for your glory. Lord, help us to serve you better and more wisely and more effectively and more passionately and more, Lord, in, in tune and di according to direction as you guide us, Lord, through your word. We thank you, God, for your love for us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand for our closing song and just remind ourselves that uh, we are one body. We body. Here we go. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will wait for His coming. We will wait for our King. We will trust in His promise. We will live by His love. As we pray, God the Father, Holy Spirit, God the Son, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.